Canto 10, chapter 48, text number 24. Tvam sa tvam prabodhya vasudeva griha vatirnaha Svam shena param upa netam iha sabhun mat bhumehe Akshauhini shata vardena shure tarangsa Ragyam amusya chakulus kulasya rasho vitanaha I think that's the wrong meter. We'll try this one. Satvam prabhodya vasudeva graha vatirnaha Sangshe nabaram upaneta mihasi bhum hehe. Akshau hini shatavar padhena sureta rangsa. Ragyam amusha chakulasya yasho vatan vaha. Satvam prabhodya vasudeva grihe vatirnaha Vasina bharam apunetam ihasa bhumehe Akshohini sata vardena sure tarangsa Ragyam amusha chakodasya yasho vatan van Satam prabhodya vasudeva grahe vatirnaha Tangshena bharam upanetam ihasi bhumhe Akshohini shata vardena sare tarangsha Ragyam amusha chakolasya yasho vitan van Tom Prabhodya Vasudeva Grahe Vatirnaha Swam Chena Bharam Upanetam Ihasi Bhumehe Akshau Hini Satavardena Vsharisha Ragyam amusha chakulasya yasho vitan van Saha Hi Tvam Yu Prabho O Master Adhya Now 
Vasudeva Grahe, in the home of Vasudeva, Avatirnaha, have descended, Sva, with your own, Angshena, direct expansion, Lord Balaram, Bharam, the burden, Apanetum, to remove, Iha, here, Asi, you are, Bomehe, of the earth, Akshaunihi, Akshaunihi, of the armies, Kshata, hundreds, Vadhena, by killing, Sura Ittara, the opponents of the demigods, Angsha, who are expansions, Ragyan, of the kings, Amusha, of this, Cha, and Kulasya, dynasty of the descendants of Yadu, Yashaha, the fame, Vitanban, spreading. Translation, you are that very same Supreme Person, my Lord, and you have now appeared in the home of Vasudeva with your plenary portion. You have done this to relieve the earth's burden by killing hundreds of armies led by kings who are expansions of the demigods' enemies and also to spread the fame of our dynasty. And the BBT purport here, the term Shure Tarangsa Ragyam indicates the demoniac kings slain by Krishna were in fact expansions or incarnations of the enemies of the demigods. This fact is elaborately explained in the Mahabharata, which reveals the specific identities of the demoniac kings. So the circumstance is Krishna is in Mathura Krishna made a promise to Akrura when Krura brought him to Mathura from Vrindavan please visit my home and so Krishna is fulfilling that promise Many things happen in between. <laughs> Many things happen in between. Just to appreciate hearing some pastimes of Krishna. Krishna's pastimes in Vrindavan concluded, according to our acharyas, when Akura brought Krishna to Mathura from Vrindavan. At that age, Krishna was. Ten years, eight months. All those pastimes performed by Krishna were packed up. Ten years, eight months. When he went to Mathura, many things happened in the entry into Mathura. Meeting the washerman, meeting the florist, meeting the weaver, meeting Kubja. Krishna made a promise to Kubja, later he would meet with her, which he did when he came back. The dealing with Kuvalya Pita, dealing with the wrestlers, dealing with Kamsa, relieving his mother and father from the prison of Kamsa. The verse says he was born in the house of Vasudeva. 
Well, he was born in the prison of Kamsa, which was acting as the house of Vasudeva at that time. But it can mean not necessarily the physical house, but in the line of Vasudeva. Um, establishing Ugrasena, also freeing him from prison, establishing Ugrasena again as the king because Kamsa had taken over his kingdom and put him in jail. So Ugrasena is again the king. King means the leader of the Yadu dynasty. Now the, the language here in the verse is um, our dynasty and, and to spread the fame of our dynasty. Akura is in the same dynasty. Akura is in the same dynasty. His uncle is in the same dynasty. The, the line of coming from Yadu or the Moon dynasty. Long history of the Moon dynasty. That's in the ninth canto. So they're in the same dynasty. After being brought together with his mother and father, Vasudeva and Devaki, they wanted him to do what young Chatriya boys do commonly at the age of 11, as they undergo the sacred thread ceremony, Upanayana. So that was performed. Again, Gargamuni did the honor of giving mantra to Krishna and Balaram. And then they wanted him to go to school because he hadn't gone to school yet. So it is said by our acharyas that Krishna selected the, the teacher. He selected Sandipani Muni for different reasons. And he went to school. He, uh, he finished school in two months. He was a pretty good student. And then he, uh, he saved the son of Sandipani Muni, uh, who had, was in the court of Yamaraj. He brought him back, reunited Sandipani Muni with his son. And then Krishna returned to Mathura. So by this time, he's 11 years, a few months old. And at that time is when he paid his visit to Akura and then to Kupja, back in Mathura. He's still young. Now it doesn't give how long he was in Mathura before this visit, but he's with, he's in the house of Akura and Akur is um, honored, and Akur is also indicating his understanding of Krishna's transcendental position. Akur has already, because he visited Vrindavan, like others who visit Vrindavan, occurs under, is, is by that experience is appreciating how elevated are the residents of Vrindavan. This is an important, very important dimension of our Gaudiya Vaishnav teaching. That is, pure devotees exist outside of Vrindavan and those pure devotees that have some sense of the merit, the exaltedness of the residents of Vrindavan they honor, they look up to the resident of Vrindavan as being superlative to them. Brahma, during the Brahma Vimohan Lila, he's also honoring the superlative position of the resident of Vrindavan. Slightly different than what Uddhava says when Uddhava visits Vrindavan. Buddha says, let me be a blade of grass so I may be 
touched by the dust from the feet of the residents of Vrindavan, specifically the gopis. Akura says something similar. Brahma says something similar. Akura is appreciating. So while those who are pure devotees outside of Vrindavan, they, the pure devotees outside of Vrindavan, are honoring the super excellent position of the residents of Vrindavan. Now one might wonder, why don't they just go to Vrindavan and associate with the Brijvasis and become like them? Because that's something we would want to do. And according to our teachings, that's what we would do, go to Vrindavan. There's a nice verse written by Rupa Goswami where Rupa Goswami is beginning to describe the process moving from Vaidhi Sadhana Bhakti to Raganuga Bhakti. And with the very first thing that he says is, if possible, reside in Vrindavan. And if it's not possible, then mentally reside in Vrindavan. And and appreciate those who reside in Vrindavan. It's, it's his first verse describing the Ragamark. So the, the Bhagavatam is also from those persons who are outside of Vrindavan, appreciating the uniqueness of the residents of Vrindavan, although they don't go to Vrindavan. They have a particular mood of love, and according to that mood of love, they're content, satisfied, and fulfilling desires of Krishna, because Krishna is, is complete. Krishna is everything, everything comes from Krishna. So those pure devotees that do not reside in Vrindavan, they're part of Krishna's pleasure. They exist for Krishna's pleasure, and they're nourishing Krishna's pleasure in different, different, different ways. This is rasa, or mellow, or the completeness of the source of everything, Krishna. So occur is one such person. And in his prayers, he's indicating um, Krishna's nature. I want to read, it's, they're very, it's a very short report from our, our commentary by our acharyas, but it, it gives a hint about how to understand this morning's verse. Um, Vishwanath Chakravarti and Jiva Goswami both comment on this verse in their commentary. Vishwanath writes, paraphrasing what Akura is saying. You have appeared along with your expansion, Balaram, Angsa. It doesn't say Balaram's name, it just says Sva, Angsa. So, with, along with Balaram, in the house of Vasudev. Now, Balaram didn't appear in the house of Vasudev. Balaram was transferred from the womb of Devaki to the womb of Rohini. So he was born in Gokul, where Rohini was. But it's okay, because he was born in the house of Vasudev in the sense that he was also their son. He was their, 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 the seventh child of Vasudev and Devaki. Why? to relieve the burden of the earth by killing the hundreds of Akshohini. That's a term for massive armies of the impious kings. Jiva Goswami writes, after this introduction, so this introduction is going back to text 17, there's series of verses before we get to text 24. 
that she's calling an introduction. It's um, Akura citing the glories of Krishna. Now he's going back to text 17. Jiva Goswami writes, he returns to the present situation as mentioned in verse 17. Verse 17 is, I'll read it. Being of such greatness, again and again you appear in this world to establish the proper path. Again and again you appear in this world to establish the proper path. Again and again means met at Krishna's multiple avatars over spanning over not just Swayam Bhagavan Krishna, but the many, many other forms of Krishna that appear in this world for the same purpose, annihilating demoniac kings. O Lord, full of powers, Prabhu, you appear in the house of the best Yadu, Vasudev. He writes, Vasudev can also mean one who shines, or Deva, with wealth. Vasu, with a wealth of bhakti, one who shines with the wealth of bhakti. In case you wanted to know what Vasudeva means, one who shines with the wealth of bhakti. That's a possible meaning, one of multiple meanings. So it, the, the BBT purport, this is most likely Vridayananda Maharaj, I say that because it's not in our commentary of Acharyas, but it's, he's mentioning, there's a reference to Mahabharat in the purport, I'll read. The term Sura Tarangsa Ragyam indicates that the Advaniya kings slain by Krishna were in fact expansions or incarnations of the enemies of the demigods, this fact is elaborately explained in the Mahabharata. You're starting to read Mahabharata. So the Krishna Dharma Mah Mahabharata is kind of shrunken. It's, you know, it's essences. And the complete Mahabharata, which Vridayananda Maharaj was engaged in making a, an English translation, but he stopped. One of the reasons he stopped is scholarly people disagree on what's, which is the real Mahabharata, which is the auth authorized, authentic Mahabharata. So he, he stopped. But one version of Mahabharata is very similar to what we are accustomed to hearing. That is, when the demigods approached Krishna, Mother Earth approached Lord Brahma, they approached the demigods, the demigods went to Brahma, they all went to the shore of the milk ocean and offered prayers to Krishna to appear, he agreed. And he gave indication to Brahma that please tell the demigods that they should take birth on Earth first to assist in my pastimes. We don't hear the rest, but in Mahabharat, the rest is detailed. There's a long description. Brahma then turns to the demigods and, and instructs them to appear on earth to assist Krishna in his pastimes. And then there's a list of who became persons on earth. And it starts with the sons of Aditi, now the sons of Aditi span in time beyond the pastimes of Krishna, but that's what's in Mahabharat. Or lineages that come from those persons that are from the Deva realm, because Aditi is in the heavenly realm. Aditi is in the heavenly realm. For example, uh, in the, the story of Narakasura, who is a demon on earth, um, it starts with 
Indra going to Krishna and appealing to Krishna, please check this Narakasura. Because he came to the heavenly realm, he stole the deity's earrings, um, he took um, the umbrella of Varuna, and he stole a mountain peak that's filled with jewels and gold, and he wants to steal Airavata. So that's in the heavenly realm. Aditi is in the heavenly realm. Krishna went with Satyabhama to the place where Narakasura was. He did what he did, defeated the Mura demon. He defeated Narakasura. He then was approached by the mother of Narakasura. The mother of Narakasura appealed to Krishna Please spare the life of Narakasura's son. And she gave to Krishna Aditi's earrings, the umbrella, the mountain peak, and requested Krishna to return all those items back to the heavenly realm. So Krishna went to the heavenly realm. He gave the, the earrings. He wanted to take the Parijata flower anyway. The point is, Aditi is in the heavenly realm, along with Indra. And we find from Brihad Bhagavatamrita that at least one of the places, there's more than one place, but one of the places where one of the younger brother of Indra resides as the worshipable deity of Indra in the heavenly realm, and that's Vamanadeva. And he worships Vamanadev. So they're there in the heavenly realm. And there's their lineages that come into this world that span time beyond Krishna's appearance, going back in time. But the demons are, the, 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 the Sanskrit word is angsas, or the each means expansions. And expansions can mean different things, but it, so it can mean they're just descendants. Descendants are, are also angsas of their forefathers. And then it says here specifically, the demons um, have their angsas. So here in its references in Mahabharata, so here's the Mahabharata reference. And you'll hear that you'll hear many names. But you also understand that these many names span time, not just when Krishna was on earth and killing those persons, because many of them are before, but they're descendants. Aditi had a sister named Diti. This is just cut and paste from Mahabharata. But unfortunately, the sons of Diti were not godly. That's after the list of Aditi's sons. Rather, they were the most wicked of creatures. Diti had one famous son, Hiranyakashipu, who threatened the entire universe until Lord Vishnu appeared and killed him. And he begot five sons. The oldest was Prahlad. Then came Sam Radha, Anu Radha, and finally, Shibi and Baskala. Prahlad had three well-known sons named Virochana, Kumbha, and Nikumbha. Virochana's son was the uniquely powerful Bali, and Bali's celebrated son was the great demon named Bana. So Bana, the, the, the demons had descendants. Bana was a contemporary of Krishna, but there were others before Bana, but Bana was a descendant. Exactly what's being described in the BBT purport. I'm not gonna read all the names, but I'll just cover the principle. Diti's sister, so there's Aditi, 
and there's Ditti, but there's a th more than one, but there's a third sister named Danu, D-A-N-U. She had 40 famous sons. Her firstborn being King Viprachiti of widespread fame, also known to be sons of Danu, are Sambara, Namuchi, <coughs> Puloma, Keshi, and there's others that we'll recognize from Krishna's pastimes. Long list, and there's 40 names, sure enough. O king, there are an additional 10 sons of Danu who are celebrated for their great strength and stamina. In fact, they are considered to be the best of the Danavas. So when we hear Danavas, that means sons of Danu. So there, sometimes we hear there's, you know, Rakshasas and Danavas. So this is the line that comes from Ditti's sister, Danu. They're celebrated for their great strength and stamina. In this list, Pralamba is there. Naraka is there. Vatapi, we hear Vatapi's name in Ramayana, etc. O Bharata, the sons and grandsons of these Dhanavas are practically innumerable. Danu had another sister, and her name is Simhika. We know about Simhika from Ramayana. She, Simhika, gave birth to a son named Rahu, who always harasses the sun and moon. Simhika's sister, Krura, had innumerable sons and grandsons, who, being demonic by nature, cruelly cut down their enemies. The very name, Krura, means cruel. Just like Akura is not cruel. Krura was Danu's sister, means cruel. And all the descendants of Krota were known as Krota Vasas, or the slaves of fury. Krota had a sister named Anayu. Four sons were prominent. The great Asura Vritra. Anyu's sister, Kala, or the Lady of Time, gave birth to prominent sons who were as deadly as time itself. They became highly celebrated in the world for their unusual strength. And among all the demons, they were especially known to punish their enemies. He gives their names. Okay, as you get, so there's more. Thus I have explained the origin of those bold and powerful demoniac beings known as the Asuras. So the Danavas are a subset of Asuras, but sometimes it's just listed. The, 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 the Asuras, the Danavas, etc. So that's just a, an expansion of what's in the purport. And uh, what's being said by Akura, uh, assisted by our Acharyas, is he's, he, Akura's understanding, the person who is visiting his home is the original personality of Godhead, same as what's in Bhagavad Gita. Bhagavad Gita is a simplified version. There are three reasons why Krishna appears, age after age. Pritranaya sadhunam vinashaya traduskritam dharma sangsta panartaya. So he, Krishna, let's go back to text 17. 
because reference to that is made by Jiva Goswami. Here's text 17. So this is Akura, he's receiving Krishna. Akura said, this is the first part. It is our good fortune that you two lords have killed the evil Kamsa and his followers, thus delivering your dynasty from endless suffering and causing it to flourish. So then he goes on to the next set of verses. You are both the original supreme person. So he's citing their, you know, some bandha, who, 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 who they are. He's really clear who they are. I mean, imagine what, what his feelings are that the original person has come to his home. Who can imagine what that feeling is? And he is ma he's be making it very clear that his understanding is right on and there's a purpose of his appearance, which is what this verse is saying, to kill demoniac kings. And by killing demoniac kings, he's making the burden of the earth relieved and he's adding glory to our dynasty. So our dynasty, one of the things that Prabhupada writes is, we wouldn't even know about Yadu, except that it's always spoken, he's Krishna's in the Yadu dynasty. We wouldn't know, he'd just be a name in history that we wouldn't know anything about. But we know about him, Yadu Nandana, because Krishna was in his line. Yadu Virya. He is the strength of the Yadu dynasty and so forth. But Krishna makes the dynasty honored by his presence and doing what he does. Simultaneously, Krishna is adding glory to those who are connected to him. And he derives pleasure from doing that. And he derives pleasure when we do that. We honor those in connection with him. Krishna derives pleasure from that. Now there's, um, this make some short reference to Srimad Bhagavatam giving us an indication that those who take part in Krishna's pastimes are from the Deva realm and they make their appearance in, in association with Krishna. Here's three. Uddhava, intimately associated with Krishna. Pradumna, Krishna's first son. Bhishma, who is from the heavenly realm to take part in Krishna's pastimes. He was a vasu. According to Canto 3, chapter 4, Krishna speaks directly to Uddhava, indicating, O oh, Vasu, long ago you desired to take birth on earth and participate in my pastime, which is very rare to achieve, but I have granted it. Indicating, then the acharyas expand. Who was, who was Uddhava before he was Uddhava? Well, this the acharyas explain. Previously, he was a vasu. And then there's there's lots of detail. He was a vasu as a vibhuti of the original Uddhava, who is an eternal associate of Krishna in the spiritual world of Goloka Vrindavan. In the Dwarka portion of Goloka Vrindavan, Uddhava is a Nitya Siddha, eternally perfect personality. And a Vibhuti, 
or expand, partial expansion of him appeared as a vasu. And the detail goes that the vasus and Brahma were all engaged together in a big yagya and the sankalpa or the desire of that particular vasu who was Uddhava he desired as, as the benefit that he would receive from the yagya to be part of Krishna's pastimes so that benediction Krishna rewarded so he the vibhuti or partial expansion of the Nitya Siddha Uddhava in the spiritual world appeared along with the Nitya Siddha Uddhava as a cousin of Krishna. Arjuna was a cousin of Krishna. How is that? Because Krishna's father, Vasudeva, and Arjuna's mother, Prita or Kunti were brother and sister. So they're cousins, first cousins. But Vasudeva had nine other brothers also. And one of those nine other brothers, Deva Bhaga, was the father of Uddhava. So who, a person who participated in Krishna's pastimes previously was in the position of a demigod, a vasu. And by Krishna's desire, some of the demigods, and also by their desire, they took part in Krishna's pastimes. And there's a whole long story, which most of us know, the story of how Bhishma was around at the time of Krishna's pastimes. It looked like a bad situation. It was a bad situation as a vasu. There are eight principal vasus, and the eight principal vasus made a big mistake. Big mistake. Really big mistake. They, actually it was the wife of one of the vasus named Dyo, she said, uh, you know, I, I, I really like this calf. Nandini was the name of the calf. Surabi was the name of the cow. She wanted the calf. Can you get the calf for me? I have a girlfriend. Her name is such and such. I'd like to give her this calf as a gift. Can you get the calf for me? Can you steal the property of a Brahmin for me? He agreed. And then his brothers assist him, assisted him, and off they went with the calf. They stole the calf when Vashishta was not at his cottage. When he came back, he knew exactly what they had done. So he cursed them. They'll all leave the heavenly realm and take birth on earth. So they came back, appealed, we're very, very sorry, here's the calf back. He said, thank you for the calf back. But the punishment that was issued by me was fitting for your stealing the property of a Brahmana. So they were cursed irrevocably for taking birth on earth. They approached the person, another personality in the heavenly realm, Ganga, and, and requested Ganga, can you assist us? When we take birth on earth, because Vishishta cursed us to take birth on earth, can we be relieved of this curse by placing us in, um, yeah, by placing us in the Ganga on earth, and then we can return back to our Vasu position. Vishishta said, reprieve is you, you, after you descend to earth, all of you can return quickly. But one of, one of you cannot. And that's the one, Dio, the one who actually was the, the culprit to steal the calf. It wasn't his wife who was blamed, it was him. So he'll have to remain on earth for a long time. 
and he'll be without a wife and without children and he won't have all the pleasures of worldly life. But he'll be a great personality. So that was Vishishta. So when the eighth child, without all the detail, when the eighth child of Santanu and Ganga was born, Santanu stopped her. Don't throw that child into the river. She said, oh, our marriage contract was that you wouldn't say anything against what I do. So I'm leaving. And she left. She took the child. She trained the child. And then as a teenager, she brought him back. She, said, she gave his name. His name is Deva Vrata. Anyway, so this is an example of a demigod who took birth on earth to assist Krishna in his pastimes. There's one more example, but because of time, I'm not going to do it. And that is Pradumna. Pradumna had a vibhuti expansion in Bhagavad Gita chapter 10, the vibhuti yoga chapter. It's, it's one of the vibhutis mentioned by Krishna is Kandarpa, Cupid, of um, forms of lust, I am Cupid. That Cupid is a vibhuti of Krishna, but even more specifically, he's a vibhuti of Pradumna, who is the original Cupid. And without all the details, because it's a nice long story, but he, Cupid, took birth by entering into the form of the original Cupid who became Krishna's first son. So from the demigod position, he took birth in a manner that he could be part of Krishna's pastimes from the heavenly realm. There's other examples that it, 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 the, the Puranas and Mahabharata, the Isihasas, are filled with histories that are very complex, but it's just summarized by what this one verse. The demigods took birth on earth, the demons, took, the enemies of the demigods took birth on earth, and Krishna annihilated the angsas of the demons who were enemies of the demigods. He finished them. And that's what's being honored in this particular verse. That he and Balaram appeared for that purpose. 8.30. Let's see if there's some discussion. A lot of Puranic history this morning. It was really short purport, so... I have three, four questions, but I'll start with one appreciation that Krishna is, Krishna likes his devotee calling connected to his dynasty, uh, Yadu Nandana. Krishna likes his devotees when the devotees call him by, yes. By, uh, so, like Yadu Nandana, Yashoda Nandana, Nanda Nandana. Now, is there any, and I was appreciating that how different devotee, Bhishma Dev, Akrura, Uddhava, everybody calls Krishna by this name. And gopis also call Krishna by this name. As well as coward boyfriends and coward girlfriends also call Krishna by this name. But how this name become more and more condensed when it goes from one you, level. Don't, don't speak slower, please. How what? How this name or calling Krishna Yadu Nandana or Yashoda Nandana or Nanda Nandana become more and more condensed as we step from one devotee to other devotee to other devotee to other devotee. Because Bhishma Deva also call Yashoda Nandana or Nanda Nandana. It's way different than Rajavasi calling Yadu Nandana or Yashoda Nandana. Am I correct? 
Their mood is different. The, 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 the word is the same word, but the, the, the feeling is different. And from our Gaudiya perspective, everything is about rasa, and that rasa is expressed by feelings. So the feeling is different. That's just like we chant. We can say the name. It's not the same as the Vrijbhasi is saying. The name has the potency, but our experience is different. Um, also, I was appreciating about the Dhanavas. I was never knowing this thing, but how Dhanava and Asuras. Asu, Dhanava came from Dan, Danu, and which is one of the expansion of Asuras. I was never knowing that. And thanks for clarification. Um, my question is, uh, Bhishma Dev, Akrura, Brahma, and the other devotees, they praise the super excellent pastimes or the uniqueness of Rajavasis. Um, now, is there any categorization where Bhishma they feel more intense? How can I put this? Um, is there any categorization where Brahma is more elevated in identifying Krishna with Rajavasi? Uddhava is more elevated or Bhishma Dev is more elevated. Is there any categorization like that? Yes. Who is more elevated? Uddhava. Why? Because of his, his intimacy of love for Krishna. And, uh, That's right. It's intimacy of love. It's not from the position from which he came. It's the intimacy of his love. Okay, thank you. And last question. Uh, as you told that um, all these devotees feel content with whatever rasa yes. they have with Krishna because the main goal is to serve Krishna. Yes. Is, it something that, is it something not like that, that they're feeling happiness and that's why the reason they are fulfilling the desire of Krishna? Because if there is no reciprocation from Krishna... You're speaking really fast and I can't follow. You, your mind goes fast, your mouth is going fast, and I can't follow either Sorry. speed. You got to slow down. I'm, I'm the slow guy. Yeah. So, um, as you told that devotee feel content with whatever rasa relationship. Yes. Um, but is this something not like that because they are getting pleasure in serving Krishna and that's why they, they feel more serving to Krishna. because They feel what? They are getting some reciprocation from Krishna. And that's the reason they have desire that, okay, let's make Krishna happy. Yeah. But if there is no reciprocation from Krishna, then there will not be any happiness any, or not be any service. They would never fail that. So, yeah, yeah, what you're saying is very simple. Krishna is everything and they're part of everything and they're part of Krishna's happiness, which is everything. And so they, they're, not, they're not standalone happy, they're in relation to Krishna happy. And because their wish is Krishna's happiness, that's Krishna's happiness. And he, he, but he, and he reciprocates with their regard for him, which is part of everything. The, 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 is there a limit to the variety of happiness that Krishna can experience? And no. And, are they part, is each one part of that unlimited happiness? Yes. And their happiness is Krishna's happiness, but their happiness would not be experienced without what you're saying is, without Krishna bestowing that happiness upon them. And that's true. The, the, the living entity is, is a fragmental part of Krishna, and Krishna is unlimited happiness. So the tiny fragmental part happiness is because of the relationship with Krishna or say it negatively without the relationship with Krishna there isn't happiness of course there is some happiness with Gnani feel even if they're not connected to Krishna and there's no happiness there it's not even it's a semblance of it's a it's a mayic form of happiness it's you know de denial of the material suffering that's the that's the best the Gnanis can get it's not this the best they can get is Brahman.
And there's not positive happiness in Brahman. There's not ananda in Brahman. It's the happiness of it's the happiness of cessation of material misery, which isn't the positive state of happiness. The ananda portion of Krishna's Swarup Shakti is not accessed by those who enter into Brahman. So will the Vrajavasi stop serving Krishna if Krishna does not respond toward that service attitude? Well, you, that's a hypothetical if Krishna doesn't respond. But Krishna responds. Everything is a relationship, right? We had that discussion yesterday. You have something? Yes, Guru Maharaj. Um, one of the things that I like very much is fascinating is in the third canto, the whole breakdown of the descendants and the tree of, you know, in the universe. Uh, you explain here when you read um, the Mahabharat that these all are sisters of Aditi, the Diti and Aditi. They were other sisters. Yes. Um, not necessarily married to Kasyapa Muni, right. I assume, but they were daughters of Daksha, I assume. Yes. yes. And um, one thing is how so many of them populated the universe with demons, <laughs> which, uh, you know, you read. Yes. That whole list, yes. which is uh, quite something to yeah. understand. You know? Yeah. On the ladies' side, anything? Uh, this um, particular verse where. Um, Akura's understanding that uh, Krishna had uh, appeared particularly to wipe out the um, <clears throat> demoniac persons that uh, were in those uh, ruling positions <clears throat> and that had been um, kind of disturbing the Yadu uh, lineage. Um, <clears throat> Um, this understanding that he had, um, it seems that um, that understanding must also have been there uh, through his serving King Kamsa, um, <clears throat> because clearly uh, that's the most, not the most comfortable position, um, having been Kamsa's uh, minister. So, um, uh, I guess I'm, um, wondering and thinking that, uh, his having this understanding that he's expressing in this verse must go all the way back to the, his, um, role he was playing in serving Kamsa. Would that be correct? That it made his role more um, um, bearable. I'm not sure what your uh, are you are you indicating that because. All of this descends from Krishna that, that makes it more bearable that Krishna killed Kamsa? No, that's not what you're saying. That Akura <clears throat> was able to play his role as minister of King Kamsa, having this kind of understanding that uh, King Kamsa, along with all these um, uh, Danavas would be uh, annihilated by Krishna. So, therefore, him playing the role where he's serving uh, King Kamsa is more bearable to him because he knows that Krishna is actually going to be killing Kamsa 
and the Dunavers. Do you understand what she's asking? I'm looking at your husband. I, I think, I, 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 a short answer is, I, I, if I've understood the part, the, the, the essence of what I've understood from what you said, the answer is yes. But I'm not sure I've understood. Kura has knowledge. knowledge. He knows stuff that most people don't know. Yes, so he have all what he's stressing here. If he have this knowledge back when he was serving Kamsa, then he that knew. will that knowledge itself will he make it the whole thing make sense to serve Kamsa and to stay in that position yeah. being this demon. Yeah. 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 Yes. Is that, did he get it? Okay. Yeah. I mean, there, there's other reasons. He knew that Krishna would kill Kamsa, etc., 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 etc. He knew what, what, like, what's in this verse. He's appeared for this purpose, and he'll kill. kill he'll kill. Step seventeen. He killed Kamsa to relieve the burden of the earth and to glorify the Yadu dynasty. He knew that back. And he also knew, as many of the Yadu dynasty members knew, you don't cross Kamsa, you're dead. But he served Kamsa because many of the Yadu dynasty members fled. He stayed because he knew he would get the chance to see Krishna. That was why, why another reason, a major reason why he stayed. So when Kamsa called him to go bring Krishna, he was very happy. He was very happy. Because that's one of the main reasons why he stayed. To bring Krishna to kill Kamsa. Because Kamsa was such a demon, a, 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 a terrorist. Who's going, to, who's going to stop this terrorist? Krishna. If I get to bring Krishna and I get to see Krishna, he'll kill, he'll kill Kamsa and I'll see Krishna. Very good. He's, a, he's, a, he's, 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 he made his mistake. Anyway, without all those details later, he, he made a mistake, big mistake. Anyone else? Shri the Prabhupada Ki? Nice.